this video, we're going to cover Lab 10, which is about artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence covers a wide range of technologies, including machine learning, which is often taken for being one and the same thing. Machine learning itself is vulnerable to a particular type of attack called an adversarial attack. And we're going to explore that using adversarial images. So machine learning can be used to take an image and recognize what is in the image, the object or the class of objects that's there. For example, the type of dog that it's in the image or in fact that it's a dog uh, at all. What we can do is we can create adversarial images which are imperceptible changes to the image that fool the classifier into thinking that the image is of a different uh, object altogether. So, for example, a panda is recognized as a gibbon or a cat is recognized as guacamole. Okay, to start with, let's run this Docker container. So I'm going to copy that command and paste it here. This command uh, takes a minus V argument, which is it's going to share a directory with the container. So uh, in the first part of the argument, we put the folder or the directory that we want to share. And the second one is where on the container we want to share it to. So here we can put anything. We can put a dot, which will be the current directory, or we can put a path. So for example, my home directory and then share, which is currently where I am and do that. If you are on Windows, you would do something like C colon backslash users Fred desktop or something in, of that type and put that there. But let's just put for the time being the current directory that I'm in and we're going to share it with opshare and this way we can get files on and off the container. It's a very useful technique and you can do it with any interactive container. Well, any container at all really. And we're going to run that and so here we are. So to start with, we're going to go into the directory adversarial share. And we've got two things here, a file called exploit.py and an image. And that image is of a Labrador. Um, and we'll see what that looks like in a minute. So to run the script, we just do uh, Python and then the Python file that we want to actually run. And then the image. Now, if you're interested, you can have a look at the, the file. Uh, it uses a uh, application framework toolkit called Fullbox, which is specifically set up to do these types of attacks um, and defenses, in fact. Um, but uh, it uses some advanced sort of code um, if you're interested to have a look at it. So if we run that, what it's going to do is create adversarial images for us. Um, when it runs it, uh, it actually comes out with uh, some uh, estimates of what, what it's actually seeing as well. So it runs, it creates the, the adversarial image and then it tests it against the model that it used to try to create those model, those images. And so the initial image is of a Labrador retriever, and it can say that the confidence that that's correct is 42%. Um, and then it comes out with some other estimates of uh, other things as it makes the image much more adversarial. So uh, this sort of increases um, as it becomes more and more perturbed. It, it comes up with different types of dogs. So if we copy these images um, to our shared folder, which is slash opt share. We'll have them here. Now we can actually have a look at what these um, files look like. So let's just click on the original. So this is the OG image um, of a Labrador. That's what it looked like to start with. And this is what happens when it's slightly perturbed. And you can see that there's not a great deal of difference. It's slightly fuzzier, but to the, the human eye, that's not going to be any different. 
but um, and in fact, uh, at that level of perturbation, it still recognized it as a Labrador. If we look at the next level of perturbation, this is still recognizable as a Labrador, but now the machine learning model mistakes this and doesn't see a Labrador anymore. It sees another type of dog. And if we look at the final perturbation, again to the human eye, okay, it looks a bit funny and we might be a bit suspicious of this, but it's still a Labrador. But now the machine learning algorithm sees this as a different dog entirely. So we can use sites to try and recognize these images. There's one which is by Wolfram Alpha uh, called imageidentify.com. Unfortunately, this did work when I first set this up, but for some reason it's now refusing to take the images. Uh, if I can show you what sort of thing happens though. However, if we have a look at uh, another site, um, which is actually run by Amazon, and this is a uh, image recognition site. So um, a feature that has in the Amazon cloud, if we close that a bit. And essentially this is the original image and you can see that it has 99.3% confidence that it's a dog. It's also recognized that these other classes, that it's a pet, for example, animal. And it's actually recognized that it's a Labrador retriever and it gives it a 98.2% um, confidence. If we upload the modified ones, however, and go to the, extra, the most perturbed one and upload it, it now is not quite so sure that it's a dog, even though it's still 93%, but the recognition for Labrador Retriever has actually dropped 20% uh, down to 82%. And Amazon is pretty good. It has some defenses built in against this type of attack. Uh, other recognitions like the, uh, the, one, the model that we're actually running here and the model that uh, Wolfram Alpha used would actually recognize this not as a Labrador, but a different type of dog. So that gives you an idea. And you can play around with the uh, different images and um, use the model that is built in here because it will tell you what type of dogs that it's, type, it's recognizing. So if we now go back to the, um, and there's another thing, you can try it with the bear uh, as well. Uh, the Amazon account is free, uh, so you can actually set that up and actually try that. What we're going to now do, though, is look at a different type of machine learning model that is used to recognize uh, malware. And there's one uh, framework called the Elastic Malware Benchmark for Empowering Researchers, or EMBER. Uh, they had to come up with something to match that acronym. And you, EMBER uses a framework that is going to analyze the uh, a program and it called LEAF. And then based on the data that it produces, puts it into a machine learning model and then tries to classify uh, only a binary decision whether it's actually malware or not. So to do that, let's go into slash opt ember. And we're going to run a pre-trained model. So something that's already been set up. Uh, you can actually recreate the model if you want, but uh, the model is there already. And we've got a malware sample and we're going to classify it. So we run that. And we can see that there is, it's very confident that this is uh, malware um, and it's, you know, four nines, it's absolutely certain. So we can now try this with a Windows program called git.exe. This is, this is actually the Windows um, program that runs GitHub on, on Windows. So if we do an ls, um, ls star.exe, and we can see the git.exe, and that's a normal one. So this is uh, should be a negative, um, that it's not malware. And just to go back and just say this is how this is being run. We're running Python again. We're using the classify binaries script. We're passing in the model that we're using. So this is something that's been trained on malware. 
and it's the Ember model 2018, and then we pass it in the binary that we're trying to classify. So if we do that, it gives some output, and it does a classification, and it's 1.7 to e to the minus 7, which is a very, very small number, i.e. 0. So um, that's okay. So what we're going to do now is look at um, ways we could get around this malware classification. I'm going to use uh, a framework that is used for penetration testing and cybersecurity research called Metasploit. So I'm going to uh, open up another tab and I'm going to run um, Metasploit and again we need to give it a shared folder and So share, colon, and we're going to share again, opt share, and then run that. And that's, we're in that. And now that we can actually run now MSF console, and it asks us, to, because it's setting it up from new, you say yes. Would you like to in at the web service? You can hit return, we don't care about that. So then it starts running it and you'll get a different um, pretty picture each time. Uh, it's quite nice. Um, this one was a missile command. I don't know if any of you remember missile command. It was a console game um, uh, 20 or 30 years, 30, 30 years ago actually, uh, that you could play. Um, in pubs and various other things. Um, so essentially uh, now what we're going to do is actually use this to generate some malware, well, things that are recognized as malware. So we're actually going to need a file called putty.exe. So you can actually copy that into your shared folder in a variety of different ways. Um, one way of doing it is just to run wget if you've got it on your system or just use a web browser and it will ask to download it and then you can copy that into the downloads from the downloads folder like that so it's probably the easiest way of doing it and we're going to run now first of all a tool called msf venom and we're going to create a program that's normally used for what's called a reverse shell. Um, it's a metopita program, doesn't really matter about the details particularly, except that it's recognized as being malicious on a lot of systems. So if you tried to run this on a Windows system, it would, the, your AV, your antivirus, anti-malware software would recognize it as, as um, malware and stop you from running it. In fact, it will probably delete it for you automatically. So we've got that. So if we do ls opt share, you can see that oh, it's got the other images in it, but it's got the file meterpreter.exe. Now, MSF Venom does have some techniques for evasion, um, and there's a whole variety of them. Take it from me, it, they don't particularly work very well. But one of the ways that we can do evasion is to make the malware just look like a normal program. So what we're doing is we're giving it putty.exe, which is a program that is recognized by uh, Windows and other things as a normal program. And we're saying embed the malware in that program. And so what we should see is that uh, when we do that, we'll do that as meterpreter2, um, that the malware is not recognized as malicious. So if we now go back to our AI, uh, Ember, and we run this again, but instead of git, we go to opt share meterpreter 1.exe and run that. It's definite that it's malware, um, but if we go to interpreter2.exe, 
it's come down to 0 0.006. So by embedding the malware, and I can guarantee that this one, this actual binary will run and it will do the malicious things that is we intended it to do, um, but it's not recognized as malware by the system. Uh, interestingly enough, however, um, it gives you a different. It's given me a different result from the result that I got when I ran this, um, which is sort of interesting, probably because Putty uh, might have been updated. So MSF Venom does have some encoders, and we can try that with one that's called Shikata Ganai, um, and let's run that and see whether that works. So if we run it with the argument of encoding and Shikata Ganai, and that's put out a, another binary now. So if we go back to the window and do this, but do it on interpreter3.exe, and we'll see what it says. And you can see that it didn't work at all it basically still recognizes it with absolute certainty that it's malware. So um, these evasion techniques, even though they are used and they have fooled some uh, systems in the past, don't really work against machine learning uh, type things. You have to use specific types of attacks um, for that. There are adversarial attacks that you can use against machine learning models that recognize malware, um, but that's not something that we've um, been able to do here. So there's another flag that you can put in to mark that you've come to the end of that. And that's it for all the labs. Um, so if you've got this far, congratulations. And look forward to uh, uh, seeing how you get on with the project. Thanks very much.